So the learning objectives basically are primarily three, three main uh, learning objectives. And one is, uh, yes, the veins, the, the importance, clinical importance of central venous pressure. Uh, then we move on to microcirculation, microvasculature, and then we end with a discussion of starting forces. We will talk about this. These are the forces which uh, govern the movement of fluid across capillaries. And finally, uh, edema, which is an abnormality uh, of these uh, uh, aberration of these forces. So we start off with veins. Uh, this is a, a very busy slide. I wonder if the, this inset is uh, placed. Let me just place it here, right at the bottom. I hope this has cleared this up. Right. So we'll we'll start by something that we 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 discussed uh, earlier when we were uh, introducing the whole circulation topic. We mentioned the veins as compliant large diameter vessels, and uh, I mentioned. Uh, that main function of, of veins is, of course, it's a, it's a conduit back to the heart. So it, it completes the, uh, the closed circuit of circulation. So that's, that's one thing. But it's not just a conduit. It's not just a pathway of the return of um, the blood to back to the heart. In fact, uh, it serves a very important function. And, and this is that function, the, reser the reservoir function. So it's also called uh, uh, the blood, which is contained in the in the in the veins as a backup. Uh, it's also called the unstressed volume. Uh, so not the entire blood, definitely not the same blood, is circulated all the time in the heart at resting level. Uh, veins hold up. Uh, a, 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 a specific amount of blood uh, inside them uh, so that when the heart or when the body requires the entire blood to flow uh, throughout the system, uh, then that is made available. So this is a very important reservoir function. And this re reservoir function basically is due to the, the structure of the veins. If you remember, they are compliant and large vessel uh, vessels, large diameter vessels. So 60% of the of the blood is in the veins. Uh, it can be called upon whenever the body wants it. So for example, in any stressful uh, situation, when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, uh, what happens? What happens as we will see in a baroreceptor reflex when we talk about uh, regulation of arterial blood pressure, uh, the vasoconstriction that occurs just doesn't occur on the arterial side or i've repeated repeatedly mentioned that it uh, occurs exquisitely at the meta arterial side but that's not the only place it occurs it also occurs on the venous side of things so when you constrict a vein what happens is you uh, stress out the fluid you milk out the fluid and the blood and make it available so that it also goes up the ladder and is available for the heart to pump Okay, so the at rest when the sympathetic sense, the nerve system is not activated, the vein was holding up a certain amount of fluid or uh, blood uh, as as a reservoir. But now the body is in stress, as an example, and the sympathetic nervous system has constricted uh, the vessel, the, the veins, and hence uh, uh, pushed the fluid out of that resting situation into the heart, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's that. There are liver, skin, lungs, and heart. Uh, they also uh, function as, uh, as, as reservoirs, specific reservoirs, small reservoirs of blood. This was the, the, the easy portion. The, the more uh, intricate portion is uh, the effect of gravity on this whole venous system. Uh, we will come back to it, but uh, quickly, let me just... Uh, explain to you there are three three diagrams when all of these are uh, from guidance physiology very nice diagrams one is this one is this and one is this okay i will speak about this particular diagram first okay now you can see that this is a diagram of the whole person and you can see the venous simplified venous uh, vasculature uh, in this person so if this if this is the heart 
okay this is uh, the 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 ground zero as it as it were uh, you have veins coming from the skull and the brain you have veins coming from the arms okay then you have veins coming from uh, uh, the feet all the way up the lower limbs through the abdomen through the thorax and into the heart so the heart is receiving uh, uh, blood from the entire body uh, in, in, in three aspects, one from the skull, one from the upper limbs, and one from the entire lower limbs, including thorax, abdomen, and lower limbs. And these are, uh, remember this diagram in Guyton is of a person who is standing still. And I will explain why I've made, I've, I've made this distinction. So if you stand still, then from the heart to the feet, there is a there is a pressure difference if we, we let's assume that at the level of the heart the the venous pressure is zero zero mmhg i will explain how come it's zero but let's just assume it's zero if it's zero at the heart level as compared to that the feet of a person who is standing still not moving around would be around plus 90 mmhg this is for you to appreciate the effect of gravity that uh, is exerted on the blood that is carried by the veins. Blood, as you know, is a complex fluid, okay? And you know what is the definition of hydrostatic pressure. Forget about the definition. What is the hydrostatic pressure? It's a pressure uh, uh, exerted by anything by virtue of its weight. So gravity is, is the force which uh, is intricately related to the weight of an object. You have, you've studied this in physics. So since blood is also a, a complex fluid, it has a weight. And by virtue of that, that weight, we have, uh, we have uh, defined blood pressure as the pressure, hydrostatic pressure, which the blood exerts on the walls of, of the vessel, respective vessels. Okay, so hydrostatic pressure is that pressure, which is uh, due to the weight of the blood. So the person is standing still, and this is the reference point, uh, the heart, which is zero, MMHG. Uh, this here, the lowest point of the body and the closest to the earth will have the highest pressure, uh, which is around plus 90. Okay, so you understand the effect of gravity on, uh, on the blood uh, in terms of the hydrostatic pressure of, of, uh, of the gravity that exerts that it exerts on the, on the, on the blood. So if this is the case, towards the lower side of the body, imagine what would happen opposite, i.e. you are now going in the opposite direction of gravity. Below this point, you are going towards the earth. So you are going towards gravity. Hence you see all of these uh, 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 values are increasing, okay? Now, if you go against gravity, so the, the neck veins, for example, they would also register a zero MMHG pressure. Uh, uh, mainly because uh, they are they are exposed. It's these veins here. They are exposed to the external pressure directly. And veins being flimsy, unlike arteries which are muscular, uh, veins have less smooth muscle in their wall. And when you expose them to the outside pressure, they have no standing in front of the 740 uh, or so mmHg pressure in the atmosphere. So they tend to collapse. It's only the flowing blood and the pressure of of the heart uh, which keeps them patent. Remember this person is standing still. And if you go to the topmost part of this venous system, the sagittal sinus, here you would have actually a suction pressure, a, a, a negative uh, pressure, minus 10 or, or around that. Why is that? Because in, why is it at zero, just like the vein? Well, the vein is contained in neck, in the neck. The neck is composed of fascia, of muscles, and so on and so forth. However, the veins of the skull, they are contained in an uncollapsible chamber. You can't collapse the skull. It's made of bone. All right. So the veins are embedded inside that bone. You can't, you can't compress that. It's fixed. So if you drop the pressure within the veins, inside the skull, what, what's going to happen? They will go into negative pressure. And that's why you have a 
negative pressure in the sagittal sinus. Now, these, all of this, all of these values, uh, you can read up uh, your, your textbook to, to, to clarify uh, how come the hand has plus 35, uh, uh, this minus, plus 90 I've explained, uh, minus 10 I've explained, but do give it, give it a reading. I will, I will explain to you some salient points here, okay? Uh, one is um, there are certain areas where you have the vein going over some sort of bony, bony prominence, okay? And over there, uh, where it arches over that bony prominence or where uh, it, it, it comes in, in compression or in, in, in touch with a viscera which is compressing it, it will get compressed, right? So the area of compression will uh, constrict. So whatever area there is below that compression will increase, I will explain. So take this example here, right here, okay? This is uh, the vein coming from the left arm. It's depicted here as well. When it goes over this area here, and then this area here, there is, of course, there, the arms are attached to the, uh, to, the, to the chest, okay? So there is an angulation here, okay? There's a crossing over here. This is where the vein would slightly compress, okay? So it's coming back from the hand, the arm, the forearm and the arm. And when it crosses the axillary area, it compresses, okay? Over the bone, the bones present in this area. And then again, when it goes over the rib, it gets compressed again, okay? So when you look at this diagram here, uh, plus 35 is a spectacularly high value which normally wouldn't have uh, been the case uh, if you wouldn't have this and this pressure uh, applied on it, mainly this plus six, which is applied because of the auxiliary collapse, uh, i.e. the area where the vein has to go over a, uh, on, of, over a bony structure. So this compression increases the pressure downstream, okay? so. Uh, one is the great natural gradient of the effect of gravity, which would have uh, increased the pressure in the arm. Addition to that is that this additional pressure due to the compression over the bony prominence, this adds to the gravitational effect leading to this value plus 35. So there you go. You know how this has come into being. Then you have an abdominal pressure collapse as well. Uh, viscera come and uh, and uh, put pressure on it, uh, compress it, which has a uh, don't 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 be uh, don't have the impression that collapse is a bad thing. It's not a collapse in that sense. It actually is compression, so it compresses it, and it's a good thing, generally speaking. It does uh, present a challenge when you have extraordinary circumstances, which I will talk about when I talk about the abdominal pump. Uh, right now I'm giving you an overview. So we have talked about the auxiliary constriction, the rib constriction, the abdominal constriction. Then there is the neck con uh, in, uh, constriction, which I talked about when I was discussing the effect of the atmospheric pressure on these uh, 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 carotids and uh, how they are placed superficially so they get affected by the uh, atmospheric pressure. So these are the, the anatomical uh, uniqueness of the venous system and how gravity affects it throughout. I think we have discussed most of these points here. Uh, you will notice that due, uh, in the thorax, you have dilatation of these vessels. Any, any idea why this would be the case? Well, if your answer is due to the expanding effect of the chest during inspiration, remember in respiration, we spoke about how the chest expands during inspiration uh, and that is or uh, that exerts a, an increased negativity around the lungs so that it expands. So now just remember that, that there, there is an increased uh, negativity inside the thorax, not just for the lung. In, in, in respiratory system, we just focused on the lung, but there are other viscera, the esophagus is there, 
the the main great vessels are there which are going up towards the heart which are depicted here so when you inspire you actually tug on them you tug on them and you expand them we will talk about it in detail in thoracic pump okay now having done this diagram and this diagram let me explain to you what this is okay so you need to understand this this material here effect of gravity and the venous pump uh, in context of venous return this is where it becomes uh, operational in the sense that when you will be assessed uh, you will uh, be asked about venous return and i'll be discussing venous return when i'll be discussing cardiac output because that is that is where uh, the main application of venous return is so venous return brings the blood back to the heart and then that becomes the cardiac output which is pushed forwards so if you understand that factors affecting venous return which indirectly affect the cardiac output you know how important this topic is okay so what's the big deal here why why are we making such a big deal of uh, the effect of gravity and the venous pump uh, well as i just said its relation with uh, the cardiac output so venous return is directly proportional to cardiac output right and venous return depends on the ability of the venous system to bring back all the material all the blood back to the heart so that it can pump right but there are challenges which is the biggest challenge gravity gravity wants the blood to fall to the floor that's what gravity wants and what do you want you want the blood that has been supplied to the tissue to be reclaimed by this vascular structure back to the heart and the lungs and the git for uh, picking up nutrients picking up oxygen and then recycling it again and again and you want a robust system so that every time you throw the blood throw the blood down to the tissues which obviously is facilitated by the effect of gravity as you can now imagine it's the return which is the issue you want this system to return it every time okay so gravity is an uh, is enemy number 1 what is the second problem the second problem is the flimsiness of of veins uh, they are except large veins uh, small medium caliber veins and small veins are very thin walled not as thin walled as capillaries of course but compared to arteries it they are their their arterial cousins they are thin walled so you can imagine when you have a pressure which is going down it will take the vein with it so to have a flimsy a thin walled tube going up and the pressure that needs to be generated within uh, this uh, this flimsy thin walled tube also dropping because the blood has now gone through the capillary system it really has lost its steam remember the arterial pulse it 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 finishes off at the level of arterioles and then it's continuous flow straight forward continuous flow and the pressure pressures have dropped and you need those pressures to drop at the capillary because you need that very vital exchange of stuff that needs to happen but now you have you understand now the problem that when you now receive the the blood inside the veins them being thin walled and everything and the pressure is really dropped and you are in the foot so you can imagine the labor uh, and the out of the box solutions that are now required to bring this blood back through a long tortuous pathway back into the heart it's a heck of a job unlike the blood returning from the head it literally needs to just drop towards gravity that's it however the blood from the lower part of of the body needs all sorts of out of the box solutions what are these solutions well one is this look at this so the veins here in this direction look at my hands 
So if this is the direction of the vein, because this is the direction of the blood, there are valves. I hope you can see this. Look at my hands. There are valves which open like this. So they are, they are, uh, they are arranged so that they are looking towards the heart. They are not like this towards the foot. They are like this towards the heart. So if you get the blood to pass like this, the valves would open, right? But as soon as there will be any backflow, any backflow of blood, the valves will just close. I hope this is clear. So you have returning blood from the, say the foot or the lower areas back towards the heart, the valves would open. But as soon as they try to be naughty and they try to flow back due to gravity or whatever, mainly gravity of course, they would shut. So imagine that this vein actually is not just a tube, it is actually a collection of chamber upon chamber upon chamber upon chamber. And each chamber has valves guarding it. So valve, chamber, valve. So when the valve opens, blood comes in the chamber. As soon as it tries to go back, the valve snaps shut. The blood is now trapped between this valve and the next one upstream. It's trapped here. So next time when the push comes, again, the push will come from the slight pressure that blood has in itself, the kinetic energy, it's not zero, and something else which we'll very quickly talk about. When the push comes, the blood can only go up. It cannot go down because the valve structure is such that. So the next valve will open up, the blood will go up and then get trapped on the, in the upper segment. I hope the light is enough uh, for you to uh, see this, uh, this whole demonstration, right? So these are the valves. This is just an uh, anatomical detail. You know, the veins in the lower limbs. I hope you've done the lower limb. Uh, it's arranged, especially in the lower, in the lower limbs. It's arranged in a double, uh, double scenario. And this is exactly why there are double the veins in the legs because of the physiological challenge of moving the blood from the farthest point away from the heart back to the heart. So you have not one, you have a double uh, vein system. One is the superficial vein, then you have perforators and you have deep veins, okay? The whole point is to get blood trapped within these chambers guarded by valves, which are directed towards the heart so that there is only, oops, so that there's only a unilateral flow of blood. This is a, this is a, a, a magnification of this whole stuff that I just mentioned. So there's only one way the blood can travel and that is from bottom to the top. Okay, I hope this is clear. Because on this point, there is a very important clinical scenario that I uh, wish to hint, okay, without this slide being very cumbersome. And that is varicose veins, simply put, simply put. There are people who mostly are in heavy lifting and laborious uh, jobs who uh, endure this, this problem with their valves. So these valves become incompetent, okay? In heart, you probably must have read uh, aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation. So you, that's because of an incompetent valve. It's just, it's just like, you know, a kitchen door in a restaurant. It opens both ways like this, equally easily. It's not just one direction, like, like a room door. The, the, the kitchen door in a restaurant, it needs to open both ways so that people can go in and out. So imagine this valve being like this. It's of no use. If it, if it does not do its unilateral flow business, what good use is it for? It's just, it's just like this. So varicose veins is a situation where you have a patient and he, you can literally see his veins of the legs as enlarged, big, swelled up tubes. You can literally see it uh, in a normal person. These are all subdermal structure. You can't see the vein. Well, in a, in a, in a person who, has a, who, who does a lot of exercise and weightlifting, some of the veins are, uh, uh, are, are visible, but 
varicose veins is is such a such a structure which if you and when you see it once in your clinical uh, rotations you will never forget it's the veins are angry they are out there they are literally popped out and they're angry they're not, there's nothing normal in that in that depiction you can google it as well you will you will you will understand what i meant by angry veins so uh, the the valves basically uh, play a very important part in venous return okay and when they are incompetent the condition is called varicose veins okay now here i don't know why i have not written it but please note that the muscles of of uh, and we'll talk about this again in venous return the muscles of the legs when you move them remember this value normally does not occur it it's not this much of a gradient between the heart and the and the feet because of the muscles and because of this diagram is of a still person but normally we are moving around you know and if even in, in a meeting when executives uh, have to sit down uh, for a long while to discuss important bits uh, they are asked to move your, their legs or contract their muscles of the lower limb to keep the stuff moving to keep the circulation moving okay soldiers uh, uh, in ancient history they were especially the british one you know the one with the big cap and everything the poor chaps used to be asked to stand absolutely still so what uh, what used to happen is after several hours they would just collapse so they were like what's what's happening here what is happening here if you you've asked the the poor chap to stand absolutely still blood would start to pool in the in the periphery such that venous return would decrease and if venous return would decrease cardiac output would decrease if cardiac output would decrease dizziness would happen because tissues won't uh, be supplied with uh, enough circulation and if brain is not brain is one of the tissues which doesn't get enough circulation it will shut off the system and lead to collapse then they change their military protocol you know and now the soldiers when even their attention in a parade like when some foreign dignitary dignitary visits a country it's customary to give him a parade and a salute and all, all that business so the soldiers are asked to when they when they stand straight they are supposed to stand straight but even during that time they are actually trained to keep their muscles of the legs moving uh, so that what happens is these valves and these veins they keep on being compressed by those skeletal muscles so milking sort of an action takes place which then facilitates the movement of the blood upstream okay very important point right so we we we've done the lower limbs and what happens in blood returning to the heart from the limbs now the blood has arrived in the abdomen in the abdomen the viscera and the moving diaphragm pushes the viscera down and these viscera push on the veins so again there is a milking effect we call it the abdominal pump there is a normal uh, pressure within the abdomen which can be in which unfortunately increases a lot uh, in ascites ascites is abnormal of abnormal collection of fluid inside the abdomen uh, due to liver failure now you would say increased pressure is good more venous return to the heart right that's the first thing that popped in your head no wrong what happens is if you have an increased pressure scenario here what will happen is the blood which is returning from the lower limbs will have a more will have more challenge to it this will become a bottleneck for the blood returning from the lower limbs which again i've just explained you have put in so much effort through the valve and the muscles and what not so that the blood can go up but in the abdomen due to ascites or a tumor uh, you have abnormally high abdominal pressure which compresses the great veins inside the abdomen as they travel up so if you have an abnormal increase in pressure compressing the veins too much all the time tumor is fixed ascites is fixed viscera move with the movement of diaphragm but tumors they just sit on it ascites is just big bag of fluid sitting on the veins so uh, there will be back pooling of blood inside the lower limbs and there will be decreased venous return to the heart which is not a good thing okay so ascites uh, has its attendant circulatory issues okay now let's say there is nothing abnormal in your abdomen and 
the blood is pumped through the the diaphragm moving down pushing the ab uh, abdominal viscera on the veins and this is like a it's like a piston action this diaphragm coming down viscera pressing the veins and blood again is milked uh, uh, towards the thorax In the thorax which have which now you should know due to inspiration and expiration there is a pumping action of of the thorax uh, on the vessels returning to the heart so during inspiration there is a tugging and stretching of the lung which facilitates the blood flow in the veins and then during expiration there is a compression so there's a milking action throughout from the lower limbs in the abdomen and in thorax okay i think we've burned the slide quite well uh, give it a reading and it will be good solid now coming to central venous pressure central venous pressure very basically is the pressure right here where the superior and inferior vena kv they enter the right atrium so the right atrium's pressure is called central venous pressure okay now central venous pressure needs to be nice okay uh, the right atrial pressure needs to be nice and accommodative right atrial pressure is the central venous pressure by the way and it needs to be zero why does it needs to be i am saying needs to be zero why does it need to be zero it needs to be zero it can well it can fluctuate between zero minus one plus one uh, certainly not plus four certainly not above that why so right atrium is where you are receiving your precious blood especially from the lower side the inferior vena cava so all of this cumbersome thing you have applied the, the contracting muscles and the pumps and valves and whatnot and now this precious effort has resulted in venous return and the blood is now entering the right atrium if you for whatever reason have an increased pressure in this welcoming chamber what are you doing you're discouraging that blood from the inferior vena cava to enter the right atrium so that's a big no so something some mechanism keeps it zero at zero so that it's a welcoming chamber it welcomes it literally has a suction effect on the blood that eventually arrives after being pumped by the thor th uh, abdominal thoracic pump when it's just about near the right atrium it literally is sucked into the right atrium why do you think uh, it is around zero what is this ability of the heart to pump so the heart is continuously pumping okay so the right tricuspid area the right tricuspid valve that is actually the reference point of this whole system it keeps on getting it keeps on draining your right atrium the blood into the right ventricle and it's pumped off pumped off to the lungs so this system this pumping six system keeps the right atrial pressure low now you know why the heart's ability to pump is related with the cvp being zero or near zero okay uh, now you will understand why a straining any sort of straining any heart failure uh, which decreases the contractility of the heart will start will 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 start to make your end systolic volume of the right ventricle above normal which then gets added to by the diastolic filling of the ventricle so there is pooling of blood inside the right ventricle the pressure would abnormally increase in the right ventricle which will retard eventually the movement of blood from the right atrium into the right ventricle during atrial systole which is the last component of cardiac cycle last component of diastole last component of diastole is when the atrium contracts and pushes the uh, around 10 to 15 percent of remaining blood pushes it into the ventricle remember that cannot happen in an already overloaded ventricle of this scenario of heart failure so this causes back pressure the right atrial pressure rises and all sorts of problems start 
coming in on an already failing heart. If on a failing heart you decrease venous return to very low levels, then uh, the person is in really uh, trouble. Mass transfusion, you can work it out. Um, it is decreased in uh, extraordinary strong contractions of the heart or when there is already low uh, volume of blood in the entire circulation. So that's that. This is an important question, CVP. Uh, and the factors that affect CVP, why is it zero, etc., etc. This is important. Read it properly, please.